In this video, what we're going to do is create a laser test file. Um, we're going to set up our new laser tool in the tool uh, repository. And uh, then we're going to tweak the uh, Z commands so that our laser does not overburn the material. And finally, we're going to use that post processor that we made in a previous video, and we're going to save our file with that new post processor. So let's create a new file. Um, we're going to create a file on a scrap piece of wood to test our laser. Uh, seven by seven is good enough. Uh, the thickness doesn't matter, but we'll say for the sake of this particular demonstration, it'll be three quarters of an inch thick. Um, we'll use the center datum again. You can use whichever one you want. I use the center one. Um, we use inches for our unit of measurement and we'll just click OK and we'll be set and ready to go. Uh, this, for this test, we're just going to make it a simple test. We're going to use some text. Uh, so I'll open the text um, option here and just type laser test um, with whatever font that comes up. This Times New Roman, that's fine. We will not make it bold or italic. Keep it simple. It's um, going to be three quarters of an inch tall for the text is fine. Um, We'll go ahead and apply that, and up pops the text. We'll tap the F9 key, and that will center that, uh, that lettering there on our scrap piece of wood. We'll hit close. Uh, we're ready to move on into the um, toolpath uh, portion, so we'll go ahead and just tap the F12 key, and that will move us into the toolpath option. Um, we've got our text um, highlighted. So we're ready to go. Uh, we will use, I think we're going to use this quick engraving tool path. This works pretty good. Um, we have our option of either doing an outline or a fill. Uh, for this demonstration, we're going to keep it simple. We'll use the outline only. We're going to select our um, laser tool. Now, you see JTEC lasers up here. That's because I was playing with it earlier, but I've uh, deleted that tool from the repository. So we're going to go through the process of uh, creating a new tool. So under Imperial Tools, we're going to click the New button. Uh, we get a selection of the tool type, so we'll look for laser, and it doesn't exist. So we'll just call it an end mill or whatever you, cho you choose. Um, but the name, we can uh, call it a, a JTEC laser or 2.8 watts. Um, that'll be the name of this. The tool type, again, you don't have much of a selection. You know, certainly, you don't have a laser in the selection. Uh, for notes, we'll just put down this is the 2.8 laser um, tool or whatever. Um, for the geometry, now this is important because each one of those um, different lasers that JTAC sells has a different width of a beam. The 2.8 um, watt laser has a quarter millimeter beam, which um, translates to 0 0.01 or 1 one hundredth of an inch wide. So that's how wide that beam is going to be. Uh, the pass depth, let's just make the pass depth um, the same as the, um, as the diameter. Uh, the step over, I want the step over to be pretty high because if you use a very narrow step over, then you get a lot of uh, material burn, and uh, in, in some cases that will that will ruin your project. So uh, I'll start with 50% and um, work my way either up or down depending upon the material and how it that laser um, works in that material. Uh, but just for a matter of record here, we'll just put I'm just going to put 50% in there, but knowing I can change that if I need to. A uh, spindle speed is totally irrelevant. We don't have a spindle that we're using. The feed rate, I found um, over a couple of days usage that this 2.8 watt laser, if I run it at about 1.9 or 2 watts uh, at about an inch and a half um, height, that uh, 20 inches per minute is a pretty good place to start for a feed rate. Um, I can always uh, speed it up or slow it down if I need to. Uh, plunge rate, I'll just put down one inch. A tool number will be one, and I'll apply that, hit OK. 
go back and check and make sure that I've gotten everything here. Yep. Okay. Um, that's good. So now I've selected my tool. The uh, pressure or depth, I'm only going to make one pass. So I'm going to say uh, one one hundredth of an inch for a um, for a, a, a pressure or depth. If I wanted to make two passes, you know, I could say it was going to be two hundred one hundredth of an inch or five passes would be five hundredths, whatever. But we're just going to make one pass on this one. We're going to keep this simple and use just the outline. If we were to use the fill, that's where that um, step over would um, become very relevant. Um, and we'd have to work on a piece of scrap material to make sure that we had a good step over for that particular material. Otherwise, like I said, you could either over or under burn your, uh, your letters if you fill them in. But we're going to use the outline for this. Uh, we'll use the no nose cone tool depth of um, 0 0.01 inches. No problem. Number of passes is going to be one. Uh, calculate. We'll see what that tool path looks like. Uh, close that up. Run over here. There's our calculation. Let's preview the tool path. You'll see that it doesn't look very, um, very dark. But as we know, that laser is going to make those letters very, very dark. It only shows up. Um, kind of light here in the demonstrate in the um, example because uh, we're only cutting one one hundredth of an inch deep, and this you know assumes that we're using a router bit, not a laser, so it doesn't uh, doesn't make it real visible. But uh, don't let that throw you. It's going to be very dark when we get it done when we get done printing it. Um, the next thing we want to change is the um, the Z offset and the Z height. Um, Normally, when you're using a router on your uh, CNC, you want that router to come up and clear the material and then go down and plunge back into the uh, material to cut, make your cuts. On the, in the case of this um, laser, it doesn't need to clear anything. It just needs to shut off as it moves from letter to letter and then turn back on again when it gets to the starting point for the next letter. So we don't want to have a... Um, a Z height that continues to move up and down, otherwise it's going to um, overburn our material. So for our Z height, we're just going to tap um, 0, 0, 1. Uh, that way it will be absolutely negligible, but it has to be some form of a number in here, otherwise you'll get an error message. So um, we're going to give it just the smallest number that we, uh, that's reasonable, which will be 1 one hundredth, or one, I'm sorry, 1 one thousandth of an inch. And we'll OK that. Yep, material um, setup values change. So yeah, we're going to have to recalculate. So we'll go back to our um, tool path. Yep, and we will recalculate. Uh, there we go. OK. Uh, then the next thing we want to do is we want to save the tool path. So we make sure that it's selected. In this case, it is. We'll hit that little Save button. Um, we are going to find our post processor. It's going to be the one that we made in the previous video. You have a selection of a tremendous amount of post processors. We're going to use that XCAR laser modified inch G code um, post processor that we made in the previous uh, video. And then we'll save the toolpath into whatever location that uh, is appropriate with whatever name is appropriate, and we'll prepare to move that over into Mach 3 and, and do our laser um, down there in the shop. And that pretty much uh, wraps up this video. I hope that you found it um, usable, and if you have any questions, you know, don't hesitate to leave me a message. Thanks. Bye.